nitakwambia karibuni tena na tena ningetaka tuweze kubarikiwa na neno la Bwana na ninajua siku ya leo umejiandaa vyema ili uweze kubarikiwa na neno la Bwana kama vile nimewaambia majina yangu ni Pastor James Kamau na ninajua kwa neema ya Bwana tunaenda kubarikiwa na neno la Bwana kwa hivyo karibu tena na tena na usikie ukiwa nyumbani Masa TV is where great things happen and one of the great things is the word of god bwana yesu apesifa i say one of the great things is the word of god and when this word of god inapoingia ndani yako inabadilisha maisha yako hili neno la bwana ndilo linavunja nira ndilo linavunja maro mapepo yote yanashindwa kwa neno la bwana kwa hivyo karibu tena na tena na ninajua tunaenda kubarikiwa siku ya leo kwa hivyo majina yangu ni pastor James Kamau kutoka TOG Church hapa Ruiru najua kwa neema ya Bwana tunaenda kubarikiwa kwa hivyo siku ya leo nataka tuweze kuangalia katika kitabu cha 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 1 to 24 ningetaka uweze kuchukua biblia yako uweze kufungua katika kitabu cha 1 Samuel chapter 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 1 to 24 are you there i know you are going to be blessed like never before kwa hivyo fungua biblia yako tuweze kubarikiwa pamoja now there was a man named elkana who lived in rama in the region of zaf in the hill country of ephraim he was the son of jeroham son of elihu son of tohu son of zaf of ephraim elkana had two wives hana and penina penina had children but hana did not each year elkana would travel to shilo to worship and sacrifice to the lord of heaven armies at the tabernacle the priest of the lord at that time were the two sons of eli hofni and finhas on the day elkana presented his sacrifice he would give portions of the meat to penina and each of her children and though he loved hana he would give her only one choice portion because the lord had given her no children so penina would taunt hana and make fun of her because the lord had kept her from having children year after year it was the same penina would taunt hana as they went to the tabernacle each time hana would be reduced to tears and would not even eat why are you crying hana elkana would ask why aren't you eating why be downhearted just because you have no children you have me is in that better than having 10 sons verse 9 once after a sacrificial meal at shilo hana got up and went to pray eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle hana was in deep anguish crying bitterly as she prayed to the lord and she made this vow o lord of heaven armies if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son then i will give him back to you he will be yours for his entire lifetime and as a sign that he has been dedicated to the lord his hair will never be cut now as she was praying to the lord eli watched her seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound he thought she had been drinking must you come here drunk he demanded throw away your wine Oh no sir she replied I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger but I am very discouraged and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord Don't think I am wicked I am a wicked woman for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow In that case Eli said go in peace may the Lord God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him Let us jump up to verse 19 The entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. The next, let us go to verse 21. The next year, Elkana and his family went and um, uh, uh, now let us go back to verse 19. The entire family got up early the next morning and went to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Rama. When Elkana slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered her plea and in due time she gave birth to a son she named him Samuel for she said i ask i have asked 
the Lord for him. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Now, the Bible says that and the Lord remembered Hannah. And the Lord remembered Hannah. Today, I have come with a word that God is going to remember you also. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Mungu anenda kukukumbuka pia wewe. Hallelujah. Now, tunaona kwamba katika Biblia kuna huyu mada, mama alikuwa anaitwa Hana ambaye walikuwa wameolewa wakiwa na, ma, na mama mwingine ambaye alikuwa anaitwa Penina. They were married to one man who was called Elkana. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. And every year they could go to a place we call Shilo. Mahali walikuwa naenda kumwabudu Bwana. Mahali walikuwa naenda kutoa sadaka zao. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Hapa ndipo mahali ambapo they had raised an altar where they could go and worship their God. Where they could go and raise their sacrifice. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Hapa ndipo mahali ambapo walikuwa wanaenda wanainua madhabahu yao na wanainua sadaka zao wanaziekelea mahali pale ili waeze kumwabudu Bwana. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Na tunaona kwamba Elkana alikuwa bwana ya wake wawili. Alikuwa na mke mmoja ambaye alikuwa anaitwa Hana na huyo mke mwingine alikuwa anaitwa Penina. Now, Penina alikuwa na uwezo wa kupata watoto. Wakati wowote bwanake akilala na yeye alikuwa anapata watoto. Lakini on the other side of Hana, Biblia inasema kwamba tukiangalia uh, katika kitabu katika verse uh, katika verse, uh, uh, verse five. And though he loved Hana, he would give her only one choice of portion because the Lord had given her no children. Hana hakuwa na watoto. Mungu hakuwa amembariki na watoto. Kwa hivyo wakati wowote uh, ambao uh, uh, walikuwa wanaenda kumwabudu Mungu katika Shilo. Now Biblia inasema uh, Elkana alikuwa anagawa sadaka kulingana na na watoto wale ambao walikuwa wamezaliwa. Kwa hivyo Penina alikuwa anapata a, a, sadaka mingi kwa sababu yeye tayari alikuwa amezaa watoto. Lakini kuna kitu ambacho tunaona hapa. Na tunaona kwamba a, a, mzee Elkana alikuwa anampenda Hana sana. Na ndio maana bila anasema and though he loved Hana he would give her only one only one choice portion alikuwa anampea portion yake peke yake kwa sababu huyu Hana hakuwa na watoto kwa hivyo wakienda katika madhabahu ya Bwana wakifika mbele za Bwana huyu Penina alikuwa anajawa na kiburi ndani yake kwa sababu gani kwa sababu alikuwa anaona huyu mke mwenza yeye hana watoto mimi <coughs> nimebarikiwa na niko na watoto na Biblia inasema kwamba uh, alikuwa anamkejeli wakati wowote wakiwa katika kutolea Mungu sadaka alikuwa na mkejeli mke mwenzake Bwana Yesu wa sifa kuna ile macho alikuwa anamwangalia nayo macho ya dharau macho ya kejeli Bwana Yesu wa sifa kwa hivyo kila wakati wakisimama katika mahali pa kutoa sadaka Huyu Penina alikuwa anaangalia Hana na macho ya kijeli. Bwana Yesu apesiva kwa sababu hakuwa na uwezo wa kupata mtoto. Lakini Hana hakuwa anapigana, hakuwa ana fight back. Hana was not fighting back with with uh, with uh, with uh, with, um, with Penina. Wakati wowote yeye alikuwa na mkejeli kwa maneno. Alikuwa namrushia maneno ya kumuudhi alikuwa namrushia maneno ya ku, ya kuweka uchungu ndani yake. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Alikuwa namrushia maneno ambayo yalikuwa yanavunja moyo wa Hana. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Lakini Biblia inatuambia kwamba hakuna siku Hana alimrudishia Penina. Hakuna siku Hana aliinua kichwa chake na kaanza kuongea maneno ya vita a kinyume na penina bwana Yesu wa pesifa 
Yeye alimwachia Mungu aweze kumpigania vita. Yeye alimwachia Mungu aweze kuonekana katika maisha yake. Bwana Yesu apee sifa. Na ndio maana siku ya leo ningetaka niweze kukujulisha mtazamaji wangu. Inaweza kuwa katika ile level uko katika maisha yako. Inaweza kuwa kiwango ambacho unaoparate nacho kwa wakati huu ama kwa muda huu ni kiwango ambacho kiko chini sana. Ni kiwango ambacho katika familia yenu inaweza kuwa hata wewe peke yako wewe ndio uko katika ile level. Kuna watu ambao wamekutangulia. Kuna watu ambao tayari they are doing better than you. Bwana Yesu apee sifa. They have already succeeded in their business. They have already succeeded in their marriage. They have already succeeded in whatever they are doing. Lakini sasa wewe uko tu mahali pale. You have not succeeded in anything. You have not seen growth in whatever you are doing. Bwana Yesu apee sifa. And maybe probably the people that you are who are surrounding you maybe they are your competitor they are people that you are competing with tayari wako mbele yako tayari wamechukua hatua ambazo wako mbele yako na sasa wameanza kukukijeli wameanza kusema huyu ni strategy hana huyu ni, ni kupanga mambo hajui kupanga huyu ni, ku, ni ku, hajui kufanya mambo ndio maana yeye anabaki kuwa nyuma ndio maana yeye hakuna kitu anaweza anza na kieze kufanikiwa ndio maana yeye maisha yake yamebaki kukwama because hana alikuwa katika state ambayo tunaweza it was a state of stagnation there was no growth in her she could not see anything yeye alikuwa na muomba Mungu lakini hakuwa anaona any transformation hakuwa anaona any change katika maombi yake Bwana Yesu apee sifa but i like the spirit that was upon hana it was a spirit of persistence it was a spirit of tenacity hana hakukufa moyo alikuwa mtu ambaye alikuwa anajua hii vita lazima Mungu atanipigania na atanipatia ushindi am i talking to somebody here Bwana Yesu apee sifa kwa hivyo hana yeye hakukufa moyo aliendelea kupush agenda yake aliendelea kupush agenda ambayo alikuwa she knew what she wanted she knew that she needed a baby there is one woman who is fighting her kuna mama moja ambaye tayari ana mkejeli ambaye tayari anaongea vibaya kuhusu uh, utasa ambao alikuwa nao Bwana Yesu apee sifa. Unaweza pata katika maisha yetu tuko na utasa tofauti. Tuko na wengine tuko na utasa katika tumbo zetu. Tuko wewe ni mama, umeambiwa uko na utasa in your womb. Hauwezi pata mtoto. Unaweza kuwa wewe ni mwanabiashara, uko na utasa katika biashara yako. Biashara yako haisongi mbele. Biashara yako haichukui hatua ya kukua. Kwa hivyo unapata kwamba you have stagnated. Umefika mahali umemtolea Mungu sadaka. Kwa hivyo Hana sio ati hakuwa anatoa sadaka. Hana alikuwa anatoa sadaka. Sijui kama nanena na mtu mahali hapa. She was a giver kwa sababu alikuwa anapewa sadaka na mume wake ili aweze kumtolea Mungu. So when it comes to giving, Hana was a giver and in fact she was a very good giver. Lakini as long as she was giving, nothing was happening. As long as she was going to the place of worship, that is a place called Shiloh, there was nothing that was happening. Na nimetumwa kwako ambayo unanitazama mtazamaji wangu. Inaweza kuwa umefanya kile ambacho kinafaa kufanyika katika ulimwengu wa kiroho lakini bado haujaona mabadiliko umekuwa ukitoa fungo la kumi. bado haujaona mabadiliko umekuwa ukitoa sadaka ya dhabihu bado haujaona mabadiliko kama ni kutoa umetoa kama ni kupeana umepeana hakuna jambo ambalo la kiroho ambalo haujafanya kanisa umekuwa ukienda 
kila siku Jumapili kama ni kumpenda Mungu umekuwa ukimpenda umekuwa ukiishi maisha ya utakatifu lakini lile jambo ambalo umekuwa ukiamini ya Mungu bado haujaona mabadiliko bado liko pale pale ndio maana nimetumwa kwako ni kwambie usichoke endelea kumtafuta Mungu ndio maana tunaona katika Biblia huyu mama ambaye anaitwa Hana yeye hakuchoka alikuwa kila siku elkana akiandamana na familia wakienda kumtolea Mungu adhabihu zao wakienda kumwabudu Mungu mahali kunaitwa Shilo yeye alikuwa anaandamana na bwanake Bwana Yesu wa sifa yeye alikuwa anaandamana na bwanake because she knew what she wanted ukijua kile ambacho unataka hakuna siku utakufa moyo kukitafuta haleluya sijui kama nanena na mtu mahali hapa nasema ukijua kile ambacho unahitaji hakuna siku utachoka kukitafuta there is something that we call a consistent prayer of a righteous person Bwana Yesu opee sifa. Kuna kitu inaitwa consistency. Usiwaikufa moyo hata kama lile jambo ambalo unaombea bado haujaona mabadiliko. Usikubali kukufa moyo. Na ndio maana Hana yeye hakukufa moyo. Yeye hakukufa moyo. Aliendelea kupasu na kutafuta Mungu. Aliendelea kupasu kwa sababu alijua nikiendelea kuita huyu Mungu hii mimba yangu lazima nitaipokea kile ambacho nataka lazima nitakukipokea ndio maana hata mimi nimetumwa kwako mtazamaji wangu usikufe moyo mchana wa leo usikufe moyo siku ya leo kile ambacho unataka Mungu akupatie lazima atakupea na ndio maana tumeona kwamba each time biblia inasema verse 7 Every year each time Hana will be reduced to tears and will not even eat. Bwana Yesu apesifa. Hana alikuwa ame, ame, amekejeliwa. His life was full of tears. His life was her life was full of tears. Her life was full of pain. Nimetumwa kwa mtu mahali hapa ambaye maisha yake ni uchungu mtupo, ambaye maisha yake ni kilio tupo, ambaye maisha yake haieleweki yanaenda namna gani. Sio ati kanisa hauendi. Kila siku asubuhi unaelekea kanisani, umekuwa umefunga na kuomba, umefanya chochote ambacho kinahitajika kufanyika ili Mungu aweze kukubadilishia maisha lakini bado uko tu pale pale kile kitu ambacho ulikuwa unaombea bado hakijaondoka bado kiko pale pale asubuhi ya leo ama mchana wa leo ama siku ya leo Mungu anasema kwamba hicho jambo ako na uwezo wa kuondoa ako na uwezo wa kukuokoa ako na uwezo wa kutengeneza njia mahali hakuna njia Bwana Yesu ape sifa na ndio maana hana yeye hakukufa moyo yeye hakunyamaza aliendelea kumuita Bwana aliendelea kumlilia Bwana mpaka Mungu akasikia kilio chake alisikia kilio chake namna gani usibanduke katu hapa hapa masa tv tunapochukua break kidogo i'm coming back na ninajua kwamba unaenda kubarikiwa na neno la bwana god bless you shalom katu hapa we take a break of few minutes then we are coming back na njoo unaenda kubarikiwa in jesus name